But again, Jesus has given you and me specific calling, and the harvest is not the problem. The harvest is ready, and, and he has given us everything by his Holy Spirit, and he has sent us out as lamb among wolf. But he do it because he's with us. And then he has sent us out to find a person of peace. Find somebody who are open, ready to receive. And we know that if you seek and continue to seek, you will find. The Bible has given us that promise. And you pray God specific for things he will give you. So you can say, God, help me today. Help me to find that person of peace. Who do you want me to find this day? But we do not only pray, we also seek. And then we go out to seek and seek and find. And sometimes we can see God is leading us to some person or, or putting a person in our head, go and talk with that person or meet with that person. But very often we just go out and stop many people. And then we stop, hi, hey, I'm a Christian and I'm out here. Can I talk? Can I pray for you? And many people say, no, I'm not interested. When we meet those people who are not interested, we don't sit down and cry and think, what is wrong with us? We just, okay, have a good day, and nice, and hey, okay, you're in a hurry, have a good day. Do you, okay, you are not interested, nice, okay, bye-bye. And we, we don't need to prop, uh, put the gospel in the head. You just prop it down in their strokes so they throw up. But just have a good day. If people are not ready to listen, then don't force them to listen. Because that person was maybe not ready now. Maybe you meet him in one year and now he's ready. Because he came to a point in his life where he was ready. Because God really, the Holy Spirit is working people. And he need, nobody can come to God unless God is strong. We are working with the Holy Spirit. We and the Spirit is witness. We are working together. But we just go and go and go in everyday life. And then suddenly you meet some person who are open. And I remember when I started to evangelize, it was easy in the beginning because most, uh, it was easy when you meet people who are not interested. Because then the conversation stopped automatically. Okay, you're not interested. Bye-bye. But suddenly I met somebody who was interesting. Okay. And she asked Christian. And you know they are interesting by the Christian. How have you met God? Okay, like this. Okay. How, 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 what about this? Okay. Can everybody experience that? And, and she started to ask questions about God. And then I was like, what to do now? <laughs> because normally people are not interested. And suddenly I meet somebody who actually wants to listen to me. Uh, here's a card. Come to church here on Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs> and you invite people to church. Why? Because... What to do? We have not become disciples, so we have not done it. So we want somebody else to do it. And I remember many times I stood many, many, many times, look, staying outside church on Sunday and waiting for them to come. And you know what? They never came. Because it's a big, 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 big step to come to a church. You don't know how to behave and you've not been there before and it's a big step. Or sometimes you actually get them to church. And I remember the first time I had somebody with me in church, it was a funny experience, a strange experience. Because when you have people in church and you want that non-believer to get saved, and you want that person to really hear the gospel, you are seeing everything through their eyes. Have you tried that? Tell someone? You are sitting there and then you see everything through their eyes. Oh, it's really long worship today. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. Just, just wait. Just wait. Because they're like. And you're like, okay, come on. No, come on. Hurry up. Yeah, it's, going, it's going to be good. Good to be good. And then the information come. Oh, no, not that today. Oh, no. And then the collection and offering come. Oh, no, not money again. No. It's going to be good. You know, it's not just about money. No, no, no. It's about something else. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're talking and talking. And you see everything through their eyes. And. Amen, hallelujah. Oh, why do they say amen, hallelujah all the time? Oh, come on, come on. Just come to the gospel. And, and, you, and, and it's so strange experience suddenly to see what we are doing through somebody else's eyes who do not know it. And how often do people get the whole gospel in a Sunday meeting? I would say never. 
Because very often we speak about something else and it costs us just five minutes in the end. Anybody want to receive Jesus a little of your hands or pray this prayer? But this is not the gospel. So I would say the church is not a good place to take people to get saved. <laughs> it's not. You can take them there after they're saved because then they know what it's all about. And it's not weird for them. Now they want to have fellowship with all. So the best place like this is when you find a person of peace, sit down with them and eat and drink what they serve. And there's something special with eating and drinking. How many like to eat and drink? Come on, you're almost there. You are, yeah, two hands. But this is, this is the best thing because, you know, when, when we speak, welcome to the house of God. It's so beautiful to see you all here today. How often do you do that over a coffee table? <laughs> Welcome to this coffee table. <laughs> it's so beautiful to see you here today. Now I'm going to talk to you the next 45 minutes. And I'm talking and talking and talking for 54, 45 minutes, one hour and a half. And I'm talking, 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 and then after talking, amen, thank you, brother, and I leave. <laughs> you never do that over a coffee table, do you? Because over a coffee table, you sit down and you are normal. It's okay to be normal. And, and you're sitting there because you're drinking coffee. You are relaxed. You are laughing. You, you, you are talking. You, you have a conversation. And you're like, okay, where are you from? And, okay, nice. Okay, is that wife? Okay, your kids. And, and, and you sit and talk. And what about this? Have you experienced God? And after a small conversation... You actually know who's sitting in front of you or have a better picture of who's sitting in front of you. And because you know who's sitting in front of you, it's easier to explain the gospel because you know who you are talking to. I cannot know who I'm talking to from this platform because I'm not greet everybody of you. So, but sitting in front of you, you know who you're talking to. And then you can explain the gospel in a way where people understand it. And if there's something they don't understand, they say, sorry, what? what? I, I, sorry, I don't understand. When you say repentance, what, what do that mean? We never do that in a church. We never do that in front of 200 people where I'm talking. Somebody say, hey, Tom, what did you mean when you said that word? And because that people don't understand the gospel the same way that if you sit down with them and talk. So you can explain, you can talk, and you can share the gospel. And then you can baptize them water and Holy Spirit when they repent. And we're going to talk about the gospel tomorrow, and this is important. But actually, Jesus here, before the gospel, he said, heal the sick and then preach the gospel. He called us to go out, find some person. When you go there, you just heal the sick, and then you preach the gospel. I'm going to share, share, share two examples, and then you're going to get an example here from Ireland also. In many, many, many years, I did not lead anybody to Christ. I was evangelized, I was doing a lot, but there was no fruit in my life. And I was frustrated. And I was thinking, what is wrong with the harvest? <laughs> but then I started to see what Jesus actually said. And then I started to do it. And, and a testimony, short time ago, and some years ago, I was on, on, on a city and I, in the city, and I met a guy in the queue, going to pay. And we got to talk and and he was religious and believe in god but but there's many things he he have not understood so what did we do uh, uh hey sh there's a coffee place shall we sit down and drink coffee yeah let's do that so we sat down and drink coffee and we talked and we talked a little and then i i shared the gospel with him and he suddenly understood what he needed to understand and after that he repented from his heart and then we, I want to pray for him to receive the Holy Spirit also. So we needed to find a place to pray for. So we went down in the parking garage because there was an empty place where there was no cars. And there I prayed for him and he actually got baptized with the Holy Spirit and started speaking tongues in the parking garage. Then I took him out on the street and I started to disciple him and say, now you follow me and I show you how to share the gospel. And we found somebody and stopped somebody and shared the gospel. We also found a sick person, a few sick person, and then I let him pray for them, and they got healed. 
Because now he had the Holy Spirit 10 minutes, so he's on time. He prayed for the first one. And they got healed. And then I drove him to a friend and said, can you baptize him? Because I'm in a hurry. I have another appointment. But just before I left him there, I said to him, now it's not about you anymore. Luke chapter 10, he said, go out, find a person of peace. You are that person of peace we are going to find today. But there's people in your life who are so ready, who are the person of peace. Find them. Let's find them together. Let's see who that person is. And then I went home and they baptized him. In the evening, when I came home, I read on Facebook. I became friends with him on Facebook and he wrote, Hello, everybody out there. This has just been the most amazing day in my life. You will never believe what happened. I was in a city where I met Torben Sundergaard. We sat down and he explained the gospel to me. We went down in a parking garage. I received the Holy Spirit spoken tongues. I never experienced anything like that. We went out on the street. I prayed for a few people who got healed. One woman could lift her hands for the first time in many months. We went to a friend, and they baptized me in water, and it was the best day in my life, and Jesus is alive, something like that. I'm saying that because if there's anybody out there who needs Jesus, then contact me. <laughs> so what happened? The day after, somebody wrote to me, hi, Tom, can we meet? So we met on Burger King this time. The same again, sit down, hi, <laughs> where are you from? And he, she had went to school with him many years ago. They don't know each other so good, but they are friends on Facebook. And she read it the day before. And she was a person piece where the Holy Spirit was working. We did the same again. Talked, shared the gospel. She understood the gospel. She repented. She got set free from a demon, actually. Then we went out, prayed for somebody who got healed. Then she invited me to her house because they had a birthday party. So suddenly I was in a house with eight people I never met before, shared the gospel. Then we went to another house who have a bathtub and we baptized her in water and she spoke in tongues. And her life got changed. And this is how the kingdom of God is working. That girl I've not seen in, in, in some years because she lives in another city. But actually I saw her a few uh, months ago, one, two months ago. Suddenly I saw that girl I led to Christ that time, cast out a demon, baptized water, Holy Spirit. I saw her on TV because a few months ago, she won X Factor in Denmark. The Danish X Factor, she won that. And now she's known in whole Denmark. But the kingdom of God is growing. How? By normal people going from house to house, leading people to Christ, healing the sick, baptizing them in water. And then they start to do the same. And we often think it had to be a big revival by a big ministry and 3,000, 10,000 people got saved in one day. It happened one time in the book of Acts. But from there, it was an everyday life where people came to faith. And this is what we are called to. So when Jesus said, go out and go out and seek and find a person of peace, when we then find people, we heal the sick and preach the gospel. We do not only heal, we preach the gospel. Because... There's something healing can't do. There's something deliverance cannot do. It'll do. But there's also something it cannot do. Where we need to bury the whole life. Where we need the gospel. Where we need baptism. But tomorrow is the gospel. Now I'm going to start with healing. So now I'm going to focus on healing and deliverance alone. And then tomorrow you get the gospel and then we put it all together. Okay. When we talk about healing the sick, you don't need any special gift of healing. If you believe in God, if you are repentant, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can go out and heal the sick. But it's like when healing is, is, it comes down to faith. This is what it comes down to, faith. We are afraid to talk about faith. Oh, it comes down to faith. So when people don't get healed, you say it's because they don't have any faith. No, I don't say that. Because those people you pray for don't need faith if you have faith. Because if we look at Jesus, there's a different example of people getting healed. There was a woman who touched Jesus. He, she said, if I just touch him, I'm going to get healed. And she touched him and he got, she got healed because of her faith. There was also a man who came to Jesus and said, Jesus, just speak one word and my servant at home is going to get healed. And Jesus saw his faith and that person got healed. That person was laying home in bed maybe. Oh, sick, sick. 
Sick, hey, I'm healed. What happened there? <laughs> maybe you do not know. Maybe he didn't have any faith, but somebody had faith for him. Then there's the example of Lazarus, who was dead. Jesus still wake him alive. Lazarus have no faith, dead faith. <laughs> so, but it come down to faith. But faith is not like, no, I have to. Faith is like, see faith like a muscle. You need to train it. The more you train it, the more it grow. So when I start to lift weight, it will grow. Can you stand up again, Rudy? Can you stand beside me? Can, can, can you do a little like this? Okay. Well, no, I'm not going to show, but, but if you look at us, you know I'm training much more than he do. Okay. But if you look at him, I, he don't, I don't think he sit behind the computer the whole day and play with a mouse. <laughs> By looking at him, I think that he has been using weights or he worked a physical hard work. Is that correctly? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? And you can see the same with us. We, have, we start maybe with a little faith. How did we get that faith to grow? Of course, by the word of God, but also by getting experience, by trying. And maybe in the beginning, we don't have faith to lift that mountain that is in front of us. When it comes to healing, I grew up with a mom, mom who was paralyzed. When I was 16, she got a stroke and she got paralyzed. And she was paralyzed on one side. So when I came to faith, I've never seen healing. I've never heard of, yeah, I've heard of healing, but I've never seen it, never experienced it. But what was the first thing I do when I came to faith? I tried to pray for my mom. And it was like this. And I was like, I tried to lift my mom, like, even try to, to see her get healed, but nothing happened. Nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And to be honest, it was also hard to pray for her because first there's my mom. It's not always easy when you're close to them. Second thing is that she's really sick, really paralyzed in a wheelchair, and I've never seen anybody heal. So... I prayed, but I had a lot of doubt, more doubt than I had faith. Instead of going from there and say, oh, I cannot heal a sick, I maybe don't have the gift of healing, I cannot do it. Then I said to my mom, mom, I will be back. I will go out and train my faith muscle and then I'll come back later. And then I left my mom and I went out and then I found somebody like, hey, what is wrong with you? Oh, I have a headache. Okay, how long time have I had it? A half hour. Okay, I try. And I pray for somebody and they got healed. Yeah! I know, of course, we know for God, it's the same. For God, it's not like a big miracle and small miracle. But God still works through us. He's disciples. And we are still a vessel for Him. So I saw something happen. And then I saw a little more happen. And, and every time I was out walking, then I come to somebody in a wheelchair. Hey, I think we should go this way now. <laughs> and, and I was afraid. I'm, I'm, and to be honest, just be true. I'm still afraid sometimes. I still have a lot of fear because there's many things I have still not seen. And very often when I come to something, I'm like, oh, I'm doubting. Can God really? And of course I know, but I have a lot of fear. And I started to grow and start to learn. But a few years ago, I met a woman who came with a stroke. And she was paralyzed in one side, and she walked like this, and only smiled in one side. And, but then I'm like, now is now. And I prayed, and she got healed. And she could walk and smile and, and do everything. I have her testimony on our YouTube channel. So I saw a breakthrough, and you know what? Next time I saw somebody, I was still afraid. Because sometimes we need even more breakthroughs and more breakthroughs and more breakthroughs. And it's just life. So I want to say again, if Jesus was on earth, he would heal everybody every time. So when people do not experience healing, we don't need to write a lot of books and explain, oh, it did not happen because God wants to learn, teach them something, or maybe it's their sin in their life, and maybe it's a generation curse, or... Maybe I need more special anointing or maybe all of those books burn it. 
But, it, but so I, again, Jesus' disciples, Jesus' princes could not cast the demon out of that boy. But then Jesus came and just did it and rebuked them for the lack of faith. When you talk about that can only be cast out by praying and fasting, it's not a talk about the demon, it's talk about their faith. It's talking about the faith at that time, their lack of faith. Because it comes down to faith. The same he will do today. When we see things do not happen, we can come with a lot of excuses and write a lot of books. But if Jesus should come down on earth today for a walk here for 10 minutes, he would just heal the sick and then he would go on. And then we could look at the books. Why it did not happen? Ah, okay. Burn it. Because it's not biblical. Again, the healed multitude, every time Jesus healed the multitude, we see that in the book of Acts, that everybody who came got set free, got healed. We see that, everybody. And there were some of them who have unforgiveness in their life. There was many who have sinned in their life. There was many who maybe could learn something for the sickness, but it did not hinder God not to heal them. So, but we are still like Jesus' disciples were at that time. We are still there today. Sometimes we pray and they did not get healed. And if Jesus was here on earth, he would sometimes look at us and say, Torben, how long can I keep up with you, Torben? Have you not learned by now? Torben, uh. And then he just healed the sick and he said, come Torben, let's go on. You follow me? So it's the same. So every time we pray, every time I pray for people, they do not get healed. I just recognize, okay, it's my fault. But I don't have a problem with that because I know I'm a disciple. I'm here to learn. Uh, and, and God did not expect me to be perfect for the first day. He expected me to learn and to grow. So the most important for you is to try to pray. Just learn. Just get your hands into and try. Um, I, I was... Uh, uh, what is time? I'll pray for a few people now and, and show some example how to pray for people. Who here have some sickness in the body, pain or something? We just have a few people. Uh, what is wrong with you? You? Okay. Do you feel it now? Okay. Can, can I come up? What is wrong with you? You have pain? What? Do you feel it now? What? what? Okay, uh, just come up. What's yeah, just come up, both of you. Okay, we just have a few people here. And then, can you come up here? And, and we'll pray for everybody later. Let's imagine, uh, okay, who here have not prayed for any sick people yet, but want to pray for sick who get healed? Who love Jesus and want to pray for sick people? <laughs> have you done it, Rudy? Okay, have you done it? Okay, can you come over and help me? Try to imagine, what is your name? Lawrence. Tom, hi. Well, try to imagine we are, we are doing discipleship. We are out on the street. And, and of course, we can't do it alone, but it's much easier with walking with somebody who takes the pressure away from us. And, and we would just be out on the street now. And out on the street, we meet many different persons. Some person, we see things happen right now. Some person need the gospel, not just healing. Uh, everybody needs the gospel, of course. But you understand? But some person, uh, yeah, people are different. We go. <laughs> Can you stand there in front of us? Hi, excuse me. Hi. We, we're just out here talking with people. Uh, can I ask you something? Funny question. Do, do you have some sickness, some pain in your body or something? Yes, I am. Oh, yes, you have. Okay. This is sometimes how we do it. Like, hi, excuse me, can I ask you something? And, and just relax. Don't go to people like, oh, it, it, it don't work fine. So come and, and you ask, okay, what, what, what is wrong with you? Okay. Okay, where from? Canada. Okay, friends, friends, please. Okay, but you feel the pain? Okay. Okay. Are you baptized in water? Yes. Holy Spirit? Okay. Do you sometimes have problem with fear in your life? Fear? You have problem with fear? Yes. Okay. Because of what? Can you explain? Okay. 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 The re 
and security. The reason I ask with fear is because what you sometimes see, especially with arthritis, that, that you have to deal with really fear very often and other things. If, if she just had a problem in the shoulder, we can like put hands on the shoulder and pray for the shoulder. If she had a problem in the head, don't do like this. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. Sometimes think where you put the hands. But, but often, sometimes you, we just pray for the whole body. This is what I like to do. And, and, and she has something in both hands and all over. So, so I often, can, can you hold, can you stand there now and hold this? So, so what we often do, I, can I pray for you and just pray for God to touch you and set you free? Do you feel the pain now as you do? Okay. But take my hands, just relax, close your eyes. And just pray this prayer after me. God, God I come to you. I come to you. I repent. Uh-huh. And I ask you. And I ask you. Set me free. Set me free. From every fear. From every fear. Every pain. Every pain. Come with your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And fill me up. And fill me up. Right now. Right now. Freedom. Go, go, go. More, more. Go. Right now. Freedom. Freedom. Go, go. I command this. Leave her. Leave her. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Holy Spirit. Come on. Go right now, go right now, go right now, go, go, more, 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 da 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 freedom right now, freedom, 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 Holy Spirit, more, let go, let go, let go, every pain 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 go, I don't know, can I feel something different right now? Yeah, it's that. But what? Ilse, but I want to start with more, and you're going to hear the testimony later. What we do, when I pray for her, I can see something in the breathing, something starting. Did you feel it? Heat. Yeah, heat. So you can see the Holy Spirit is working, and she already feels it's less something is happening. If you are not all looking, I would just take more time. Just take a few minutes and pray for her and pray for her and pray for her. Now Ilse is going to do it there. No, just pray there in the corner. And, and we continue a few people, and, and you can hear the testimony afterwards. So we do the same again. So I'm like, hi, hi. Okay, uh, do you have any pain in your body? What's wrong with you? Uh, long-term back problems. And you have it now? I don't feel it when I'm standing, but sometimes I'm walking, and it'll just, it'll dig me. Sometimes, you can also meet this out on the street. People who actually have a sickness, but they don't feel the sickness right here. Very often, it had to do with the back and the legs is not the same length. Have you checked that? Okay. 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 You give a line. So, so you know there is a problem there. Okay. Do you have pain? You, and you don't feel it now? Okay. So when people... When, sometimes we just say, okay, we cannot check, check it. We cannot pray five times, ten times onto the heel because they cannot say it. You baptize water, Holy Spirit? Okay. Can I just pray for you? Can I just bless you? So we just pray.
I can, as I was doing that, because I was testing it to see whether it was gone, and when I do that, I can feel the tightness in the lower back, which is where I've always had it. So I can still feel it now okay. as I, that's why I was So there's no more, okay. But, and then we continue, last thing go, last thing go, Lifa, 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 last thing, come on right now, last thing go, we command healing right now, healing right now in the name of Jesus, try again. And sometimes don't close your eyes when you pray for people because if you close your eyes, you cannot see what happened. <laughs> and we want to look at the face and look at how much is it now? Yeah. Now she says she can still feel it. Now it's often where we give up and run away because we have prayed one time, two times, and nothing has happened. But it's really on to continue, continue, continue because if we don't have faith to lift a mountain one time, then we can take a little of the time. And then in the end, so we pray again, last thing, go, I command, last thing, go, right now, stiffness, go, stiffness, go, right now, in the back, right now, try again. It's ease. It's ease. And this last, last thing, last thing, go, I command, last thing, go, right now, last thing, go, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, try again. I can't feel what I feel, felt a few minutes ago. What? I can't feel what I felt you, you a few minutes feel ago. It. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Come on, amazing. Yeah. Come on. So, th so th this is an example, you see. It's okay to pray for people when nothing happened first time. And then it pray, you continue, you continue. And all the, oh, it's easy. Hey, something is happening. And when people then say, hey, something is happening, our faith is like, oh, yeah. And then we pray again. What is wrong with you? Headache and the back pain. Okay, back pain. Do you notice your legs is assembling? You know, can, can we get a chair up? Rudy, can you take your chair up here? Oh. I don't think you can take a chair in the middle. Oh, we have a chair here. But now it's your turn. If, when we meet people, sometimes we meet people and they have bad uh, back pain and headache. And sometimes it connects because it starts in the back and go up to the head. And you can sometimes see it in the legs is not the same length and everything is tight. So if you meet people out on the street, hi, but, but they, can you sit down there? We find a bins and we get people to sit down. Just go back. Okay. And then what we do, we can lift the legs up. Just a minute. Just a minute. And you see legs are lifting up. Oh. Just take the legs out. And hold it like, like this. And you see that it's a little different. Not so much. And just pray, what is your name? Amen. Amen, okay. But you feel the back pain and headache now? Just pray very short, pray that God is going to heal the back. Yeah. Back be healed right now in Jesus' name. Just continue. God, I thank you for the back. Be Lord, thank you for the back. Thank you uh, for your healing. And Lord, I just pray for healing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, bring healing in Jesus' name. In the legs. In the legs, Lord. Take away the pain in the back. Take away the pain in the neck and in the head. It's not so much to see, but try again. Pray a little more. I pray, Lord, that you take away the pain. Lord. Pray. I would say this is a difficult to see also with that. But try, try, try to stand up again. Just lay the hands and pray for every headache to go right now and back pain to go. Try to stand up. Try to feel the back first. How's the back? What? Oh, the back is gone? The back is gone. Put the hands on the head again. Pray one more time. Try again. Okay. Where is the headache in front? Okay, just put... Uh, How is the headache? Still. Yeah. But, but uh, do you have a problem with fear or something? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Do you speak in tongues? Okay. The fear, what, what is that cause? Uh, 
Okay. Do you have some worries? Have you had some bad experience with it? Okay. What was that? So it went bad? Yeah. Okay. okay. Can I pray for that? Let it go. Right now. You don't go. Go right now. Come on. Come on, right now. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Leave her. Right now. Command this fear. Go right now. Fear go. Fear go. Let go. Let go right now. Let go. Let go. Don't be afraid. Let go. Let go right now. Let go. I command this fear. I command this wrong spirit. Leave her right now. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Right now, go right now, go right now, leave her. We forgive everybody, we command this fear to go right now. Oh, your peace, Holy Spirit, fill up now. Fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. What do you feel? It's just something just went. There's something left you. How is your headache now? The headache is gone. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God bless you. You will sit down. You saw it? Well, what you did not see, but we, we prayed. We prayed for the back. It got here when you prayed. And then we prayed for the sickness in the head. But you saw in the face, you can see in the face that it was not just headache. You saw she was yeah. nervous and something happened. So we went for a healing the sick to actually command that demon to leave. And you can see, it's not easy to see, but something left her. <sighs> I felt something left her, my, me, she said, and the head it was gone. So I'm going to talk about deliverance tonight, but what you see is not only healing, it's also cast out demons. What I would like to do with you if we are on street and we do that later is to really take time now to sit down. Don't be in a hurry to go from one person to another person. When you meet people, sit down and talk about baptism water and the Holy Spirit and freedom. I'd like to talk to you afterwards to really disciple people. But this is what we do, and you just pray for somebody. And it's not a feeling. You don't feel anything, well, do you? No, me neither. 